A number of people have asked me to do more videos where I read creepypasta and no sleep stories. While I do enjoy making these types of videos, there are so many YouTubers out there who already do this a lot better than I do, that it's hard to find a good story that hasn't already been done. I decided to use a slightly different source for some scary stories. The magazine 14 Times has a section called It Happened To Me, where readers send in true stories of their own paranormal encounters. I've gone through all my old back issues of 14 Times, and picked out 5 scary true stories about monsters under the bed or in the wardrobe. It is one of the most common nighttime fears, one that kept me awake as a child, and I know a lot of people watch these videos right before going to bed, so maybe I will cause some people a few sleepless nights. The first story comes from issue 341, and was written by Jennifer Hobson. In early 1984, when I was 16, we were living in Derby, and my mum had been diagnosed with brain cancer. As a family, death held no wonder for us, and I wasn't scared by ghostly or unexplained goings-on, being somewhat sceptical of these things. I'd recently begun working at a local garage after leaving school. One morning, I woke up shortly after dawn, and distinctly heard breathing coming from under the bed. I lay there for what seemed like ages listening to it, but it must have been no more than 20 to 30 seconds. I then leaned over the side of the bed to peer underneath, wondering if it was a rodent with bronchitis, as it was soft but raspy, almost on the verge of coughing. There was nothing there. I got up and went to work, and that was that. I broached the subject of deaths in the house with mum. A great uncle in the 1960s and a great aunt just the year before, 1983 apparently. The house was bought in 1920 by my great aunt and her husband and when she died in 1983, it was left to my mum, and thence to me. My bed was about 80 years old, and had been used by both relatives who had died there. It was a single bed with a high headboard, low footboard, and a cast iron frame with chain-linked base and a stuffed mattress. My mum died in November 1984 in the same bed. The strange breathing never happened again. Or if it did, I was either asleep or somewhere else, and no one else has ever mentioned hearing anything. It ignited a lifelong interest in things paranormal, and it still puzzles me to this day. This one comes from issue 337. Michaela Pearson writes, Back in 1998, when I was 7 or 8 years old, my family and I lived in a Victorian building called the Old Rectory in Feltwell, Norfolk. At the time it had been converted into cheap flats, although I believe it has since been refurbished. We had been living there just shy of a year, and I was asleep on the top bunk bed that I shared with my older sister. I have always been a very heavy sleeper, and this night was no different, but I found myself waking suddenly with a feeling that someone was in the room. I sat upright and looked ahead at the built-in wardrobe at the end of the room, just as a man walked through it, past where my sister and I were, and directly through the closed door on the left hand side. This all happened very quickly and I was so shocked and scared that I found myself unable to cry out until he reappeared, walking through the door directly at us, but as though we weren't there. And he began to walk through the bunk bed at pillow height. I remember very vividly seeing the top of the man's head in my pillow and I realised that he must be walking through my sister's head and began screaming hysterically. My sister dived out of bed and hit the light switch, at which point everything returned to normal. I remember being physically aware of a kind of mental snap at the point it all ended. Naturally, my parents ran in to comfort me. My mother had many experiences of similar events as a child, and was therefore quite sympathetic. We moved not long afterwards. This event has stayed with me ever since and I find myself going through phases of certainty that I'd seen a ghost to questioning whether I was actually suffering a night terror or a waking dream. I'm sure I'd never seen the man before. He was in his mid-twenties, wearing a pinstripe suit, but with unusually untidy hair, considering how well-dressed he appeared to be. The next story comes from issue 333, and was written by Gary Smith. My wife Carol and I have had many odd experiences over the years. As a teenager, she would wake on several occasions with the feeling that someone was either stroking or nuzzling her hair. This feeling would continue after she woke up and would continue until she fell asleep again. 
She never found it unsettling or scary. She described the stroking as soothing, as if someone were comforting her and reassuring her with her presence. My wife's brother moved into her room when she moved out, and one day he mentioned in passing about being woken by the feeling of having his hair stroked in the night. One of my wife's friends was sleeping over when they were kids. The girl woke up screaming that someone was in the room touching her hair and refused to go back to sleep until my wife had opened the wardrobe and checked under the bed for an intruder and left the light on for the rest of the night. Many years later, after we'd married and we were living in our first home together, the comforting presence returned, visiting when I was away on business, leaving my wife and children alone in the house. Some other odd phenomena happened in that house. We had things appear and reappear in weird places, in the cupboards and under the covers at the foot of freshly made beds. Several times my wife and children caught sight of a small blonde haired girl in one of the rooms. She would appear for an instant, stand staring at them, then vanish without a sound. It seemed we also had a pet we weren't aware of. I'd been napping one afternoon when I felt what I thought was our dog jump onto the bed and walk along beside me finally stopping to stand on the pillow right by my bed. I distinctly felt the small feet land on the bed, the feet walking on the bed and the pressure on the pillow beside me when it stopped. I opened my eyes, ready to tell what I thought was a dog to get off the bed. Nothing. There were prints on the bed and the pillow, but no dog. My wife told me later that she'd had similar experiences in the house. The feeling of something small walking beside her on the bed and then standing beside her head on the pillow. She'd open her eyes to find she was alone. When talking about it later, we both agreed that the feeling was actually more like a two-legged rather than a four-legged creature, a tiny biped. We only found out about these shared experiences years later when we talked about odd things that happened in that old house. We also agreed that the experiences increased when we were renovating the house. I recall my youngest son, when he was about four or five, asking me about the coloured balls of light that followed me around the house all the time. When I told him I didn't know what he was talking about, he became upset, insisting that he could see balls of light and that they were behind me as we spoke. It freaked me out at the time, but I wish now I'd asked him more about those lights. He never mentioned them again. This one comes from issue 306. Paula Sims writes, In 1954, when I was coming up to seven years old, a doctor advised my parents to keep me inside for the whole summer holidays because of a bronchial cough that was actually hay fever, although it wasn't called that back in 1954. They set me up in a bedroom downstairs with a big old iron frame bed and school pals came to see me. One afternoon, I told them a silly story about dragons and told them to look under the bed because that's where they were. I thought they would laugh, but they went to ashen and couldn't even speak. So I bent down to look, expecting to see nothing, and was amazed to see two smallish green-faced beings in what were later called spacesuits with large globes around their heads. They were carrying large see-through gun-like things with three different coloured rays showing and when I looked into their eyes, they appeared to be as shocked to see me as I was to see them. I never ever had a friend round again because of this, and no one ever spoke a word about what we had all seen until now. This story I found in It Happened to Me, Volume 6. Deborah Squires writes, It was about 6am one winter morning when I was 6 years old. My two sisters, Judy and Wendy, my brother Larry and I were in the bedroom playing on the bed. We were up early because my dad was getting ready to leave for work. He was a long haul truck driver and was up before the crack of dawn on work days. He was often gone for weeks at a time so we didn't want to miss saying goodbye. We were jumping about and acting positively silly, laughing and giggling with the occasional settle down you wild bunch being yelled at us from our parents room. My older sister Judy noticed that something wasn't smelling too lovely. Wendy, the youngest, was in need of a diaper change. Larry and I were assigned the task of retrieving a diaper from Wendy's room across the hall. Now maybe as a child you weren't afraid of the dark, but my brother and I were scared silly. Before we left the bedroom, Larry and I made a pact to hold hands, close our eyes and cross the hall together. When we got close enough to Wendy's dresser, we would open our eyes, grab a diaper out of the drawer, and run like blazers back to my room. 
We just got to the doorway of my little sister's room when I felt Larry let go of my hand and take off. I kept walking for a bit and then opened my eyes, thinking I must be close. I was still about three feet away from the dresser, and even though my brother had run back to the other room, I realised I was not alone. Crawling towards me on its hands and knees was a very small, child-sized skeleton. It had emerged from under the dresser that held my sister's clothes, and more importantly, the diaper that I was supposed to be getting. With a surge of adrenaline, I turned in total terror and ran back to the doorway of my bedroom, from where I jumped and landed on the floor on the other side of the bed. I was shrieking in terror the entire time. My brother Larry was already on top of the bed. He reached down, grabbed me and pulled me up beside him. He was looking terrified too. I didn't know if he was scared because of me, or if he had seen the skeleton before he took off. My father, upon hearing this commotion, came running into our bedroom, turning on the light. What the heck is wrong with you, he yelled. Believe it or not, even with the light on, from my point of view on top of the bed, I could still see that skeleton crawling across the hallway towards our door. It crept to our doorway, and then it was out of sight near the end of the bed where my father was standing. I started screaming at my dad, look out, it'll get you. My father was getting more frustrated by the minute. And then, at the end of the bed, I watched as the skeleton crawled up on top of the bed, right beside him. I just kept on yelling and screaming. At that point, I remember throwing the covers over my head, because I could still see that little skeleton crawling up the bed towards me. I don't remember what happened after that. I did try to recall what happened next, but there was a blank spot in my memory. This topic was never discussed until years later. Judy and I were telling scary stories around a fire on a camping trip while Larry and Wendy listened. Mom and Dad were off on a nature walk. Judy asked me what happened that early winter morning years before and what I had been screaming about. I told her about the skeleton that had appeared from under Wendy's dresser and how it had crawled towards our room. I told her I couldn't remember what happened after I threw the covers over my head. She told me that I had made my father so upset that I got the spanking of my life. Larry added his memory, and told us that he had seen the skeleton too. He had been too afraid to say anything because of my father's reaction towards me. He said, I did save you though. I got you back up on the bed as fast as I could after you flew over it and hit the floor. I thanked him, and then we continued telling our spooky tales. I asked my mother sometime later where she had gotten that old dresser in my sister's room, and what had happened to it. She told me that she had bought it in a yard sale, and that it had long since gone to the dump. I guess we will never know if the two were linked, but it makes me think twice about buying used furniture. So that's the end of the stories. I do have my own scary childhood memory of something under the bed. I must have been about three or four, so I can hardly remember it at all. All I remember is being on someone's bed, and that under the bed there was some kind of Barbie horse toy that I wanted. I was reaching under the bed to grab this horse toy when suddenly there was this horrible hissing or screaming noise and the horse toy moved forward towards me without anybody touching it. Uh, I don't remember anything else than that other than I was terrified of it and I seem to remember my parents telling me that it was a cat under the bed so maybe as I was reaching under I scared the cat and they accidentally pushed the toy towards me and made me think it was moving. Could be. Or maybe it was a ghost after all. If you've got any spooky stories about things hiding under your bed or in your cupboard, leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.